and welcome to a brand new podcast called Joking Apart, the podcast where we interview comedians about what it's like on the comedy circuit. I'm your host, Mason, an aspiring actor and, according to Google, a comedian. But who knows whether that's true, we'll find out. Today, on our first edition, we are we are doing the interviews, like my normal style of interviews, across the Tom Mason Empire. Today, I am with a lovely guest. He's best known as one half of the delightful sausage. It's one and only Chris Cantrell. Howdy, Tom. Hello. Hello. So, let's start at the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. How did you get into comedy? Oh, God. That's going back a while now. Um, okay, so I think I basically got started around, was it 2012, maybe a little bit before? Uh, but basically, I was living in London, working in an office job uh, in marketing for a chain of restaurants, and I really, really wasn't very happy. And I think I'd always had uh, aspirations to get into comedy, so I uh, thought, why not? Why not give it a go? <laughs> Um, and then after a bit of a false start, haven't really looked back. And and then how did uh, you join the comedy turn into the delightful sausage, the group that you are now most famous for? Oh, right. Well, um, basically, myself and Amy Gledhill, who I'm in the uh, delightful sausage with, and if you don't know, uh, listening to this, we were like a sort of northern sketch comedy double act that do sort of weird uh, sort of story shows. Um, and basically we um we both moved to we were friends through doing stand up and friends through my wife and we both moved to Manchester at pretty much the same time. So because we didn't know anybody, we started running the night together, um and we called it the Delightful Sausage, uh, which was meant to be uh just the name of the night. But then basically after a few months we were having such a good time doing that that we decided to uh sort of make it an official double act and then we booked in the Edinburgh Fringe and then since then haven't really looked back, just kept working. Yeah. Uh, and why why is it not delightful sausages? Why is there no plural to it? Because it would because it just some people think it might not make sense as a as a singular rather than a plural because there's two of you. And it definitely doesn't make any sense at all. But we just thought I had a ring to it. Like I don't know like the delightful sausage it makes you wonder what is that sausage <laughs> should i look should i look it up should i google it um yeah so um yeah so uh, that's that so it's a it's marketing boy uh yeah, yeah that's it it's cynical marketing boy yeah and so then so then when you we're, we're like going up, coming up in the comedy scene. What was the uh, quote unquote comedy like scene like when you joined it? I think um, I've had a sort of I've, I've moved around quite a bit really, so I've experienced different circuits and then I've sort of moved on. So I got started doing comedy in London, um, which was a very different circuit and still is to the rest of the country. So it's lots of short spots and uh, there's a little circuit and it's uh quite well it's competitive everywhere but basically it's like not much um stage time but loads of comedians so it was quite good and I started gigging around the same time as acts like uh Alistair Beckett King and uh Tim Renkow and Sophie Hagen and stuff um so they were people that we were doing gigs with obviously all did a lot better than me <laughs> um uh and were fantastic acts but uh yeah and then after that, I moved up north, um, like Manchester five years ago, and then even further north two years ago. So it's, uh, um, yeah, like sort of all sort of different, quite different scenes. And I don't, I don't, I don't get the impression it's changed too much, yeah. to be totally honest with you. Um, but it's nice. I like I've I've sort of been off the gigging circuit for a while, and now that I've come back to it, it's really nice to meet the newer acts on the circuit and stuff like that when I've started because I've I've just started doing stand up again this last year. Mm. Um and me and Amy don't do loads of gigs together because of logistics and also because people don't really like uh, comedy club lineups don't really like sketch comedy. So um yeah, so we didn't do it. 
Yeah, and then how was the? How did you get the? How did you get the delightful sausage from stage to screen? How did how did that like transition work? How did you well, like sell yourself to these people that wanted you on their programs? I think it's just a part of. Um, what was the first thing we did? First thing we did was Harry Hill's Cup Night, which was a show on Channel Four, um, which was Harry Hill showcasing. Uh, acts that he liked which is like weird acts variety ones and that was basically off the back of Edinburgh so what we do on there was a snippet of our Edinburgh show from 2019 <laughs> is that right yeah it is I think so 2019 so with that one it wasn't us so we just had to do like a tryout spot um, and I think impress Harry to the point where he put us on so we did that and then since then we've done a few other bits with appeared on mash report kind of as ourselves um and we've also done a few other little bits and pieces where we sort of tread the line between being ourselves but also acting with stuff that we've written and if it's me and amy together then it's largely we do sort of scripted a mix of like scripted and improv and um, we basically play heightened versions of ourselves um and yeah we've been on mash report a few times sort of that feels like a really good fit for the sort of thing that we do. Yeah, and then how did how did Dave approach you to create their or your own spin off YouTube series? Well, that's basically off the back of the Mash Report. So it's Chris Chris Stop from the Mash Report, um, who's the exec producer of the Mash Report slash Late Night Mash, as it's now known, as you should call it, um, and basically. Uh, as part of when that got recommissioned for a second for a second series, the uh, as part of the recommission, they commissioned us to do a small, um, a small little web series, which is really good, and um, and what am I saying? Which is really good, and da- the people at Dave like Mark and um, and like has. It's very supportive of us, and so it's like a brilliant opportunity. But yeah, it's all connected to them, to uh, the people who work at Late Night Mash being very, very nice to us. Yeah, and uh, and and, you, and you're really good on Late Night Mash. You, and some of some of the ha- highlights. Uh, one one of my favorite ones was when you were talking about the uh, end of the world, where where Rachel was trying to trying to calm everyone down, saying the world's not ending. Then you lot just come in and uh, break the mold. Shall we yeah. say? Yeah, that was the last one that we did, and uh, yeah, we really like it. And Rachel's been the new host this series, and she's been brilliant. Um, yeah, so we're yeah we're we're very happy with that and how it goes. And yeah, fingers crossed we get to do more. And going back to the beginning of uh, the delightful sausage themselves, we're going to say and them as in the collective term. Uh, how how did you end up meeting Amy? Um. We sort of met, we met through my wife. So my wife used to do uh, comedy as well, which is where we met, but Amy was our mutual friend. So we met doing that, and then me and Amy did a stand-up competition together that sort of cemented our friendship. And then, like I say, we both ended up in Manchester. So really, it's just a, a sort of relationship born out of just like, we both really like each other's comedy and um, had a lot of a laugh together. And then when circumstance and timings worked out to put us together we were like yeah we should we should do some and then uh yeah haven't looked back since yeah and and you were saying there about how you were having a laugh and and you also created a weird surreal type podcast how did uh tiredness kills come about because it, at the very end of uh episode two there is a heavily a lot of laughing so much so that it just sounds a little bit maniacal we sort of basically just went a bit bonkers with our friend Jack, who's the producer. And will there be any more episodes of Tiny Skills or is that being killed uh, in the wood? Well, I think we the cold truth of it is that we have some there's some real logistical challenges to making something like that that meant that we couldn't really do it off his own backs anymore. Yeah. Um so that but, but so there won't be any more tired this kills. But, uh, and I can't really say much else at this time, but all I'll say is that we're working on something else that uh, should replace it, hopefully. But it's still very, very, very early, so it's a bit too early for me to say officially. 
It's excited um, though. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, but um, it'll be a little bit of time. Yeah. So so that'll be like in the near future. In the near future, yeah. Yeah. So so you've heard it first. You've heard it first. See, we're all we're all about breaking the uh, breaking down barriers here here on at uh, 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 Teen Jump Production Empire. Uh, and then going away from the delightful sausage, you've also done a raft of things yourself. What was it like appearing in the phenomenon that is Alma's Not Normal? That was brilliant. Um, that was so, uh, what can I say? That's like the first proper sort of big telly thing um, that I've done. Um, yeah, that's the first proper sort of telly thing that we've done. So um, basically it's been... It was it, it yeah so really it was brilliant it was such a good experience and I really really love Sophie Willen who was in it and writes it um and also there's a lady called Jill Isles who's a producer and she's brilliant and so it was just a and a huge honor and then I met like the director and all the teams and stuff so I was like but I was like nerve wracking it was nerve wracking but it was fantastic and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Because I think it's just this brilliant show that's totally um that's totally unique and very northern. So it's like a huge honor to be in it and yeah, playing the creep, Greg. <laughs> and do you know, um, because obviously it, it's it's like only recently been announced that there's gonna be a series two. Do you know if you're in series two yet or have you not been told? I can't I I don't know. I've got a feeling though um, that I won't be in. I like my character, I feel is like all con- all self contained. I don't think really he was like a, a real greasy guy in the episode, but I don't think you'd be like, what's Greg doing now? You're just like, he's a creep, he's still a creep. <laughs> so I highly suspect, um, I highly suspect that we won't be hearing from Greg again, but I'm incredibly excited to see what Series 2 is about. Yeah, because it, it is a really good show. But speaking of really good shows, um, what was it like appearing? It was, this is, it's sort of, sort of a weird thing, this, but what was it like appearing in the episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? Because that is a weird concept in itself. That It's amazing. It's, um, I've been... Yeah, that was that's like a I've been a huge fan of the series via YouTube and stuff like that for years. So to be in it was just a dream come true, and it basically was a couple of hours in a recording studio in London, um, where I just had this. It was quite difficult because, like with animation and stuff, you have to be quite controlled in your timings and stuff like that. So it was st- like learnt a lot on it, but I was so chuffed to be in it, and I think. Um, the episode that I'm in about work is one of my favourites um, of the series and stuff. So yeah, totally chuffed. And also Amy from the sausages in it as a as a fax machine. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and what was it like when you watched it back? Because obviously, when you're in the recording booth, you might have not seen what it looked like. Cause you might have not filmed those bits. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good because when we got to do it, we got to watch like uh, you know, like a draft footage. Yeah where they still they hadn't fully treated it and taken out all of the little supporting things in the background and the the characters didn't have mouths and stuff like this so it was really good to see it all finished and integrated together yeah i really loved i really loved watching it being a tiny 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 bit of the process there because yeah definitely really want to do more about man, animation yeah and, uh, and are you the the type of person that would watch yourself back if you're ever on TV would you ever watch would you ever sit down on your sofa and go oh I'm gonna watch myself tonight on telly nope <laughs> never watch it at all um I watched it under duress depending on what the thing is like uh like when we were on Harry Hill we had a little bit we'd not been on telly before so we had a little bit of a party with some champagne so I had to watch it then but by and large if I'm on summer I just let it I just let it go without comment i share about it on social media but i cannot bring myself to watch it i normally get my wife to screen it for me and i just say was that okay and she says yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah because um 
because I I've learned over the over the time of interviewing people, there is a variety of people that are like really excited by themselves being on TV, and some people are horrified by themselves because they regret what they've done. Are you the type of person that? No, regrets? I don't. Re- I don't regret it. I just find watching myself. And I'm really happy to do all the stuff that I've done and I'm like really chuffed with it, but I just don't dwell on it. It's like moving on to the next thing or, yeah, I don't know what watching it. So, yeah, I don't know. It feels like listening to your voice feels a bit awkward. I just sort of let it go. Uh, and and so is with the Delightful Sausage, I mean, is there a going to be another big show coming that, that could be? Will you ever see yourself ever getting a Netflix special? Um. Oh God, I don't know. We've just recorded his own special. Um, we did it in Manchester, so I don't. I I think we're a bit. Um, yeah, we're not quite at the stage of a Netflix special. I don't think, but uh, we've had we've done two good shows. We've done had two the last two shows we've done. I've had two really good performances at like the Edinburgh Festival and stuff. So that's been fantastic. Um, and we're very chuffed of all the opportunities that come off the back of that. So, but we've just yeah, we just recorded it ourselves, and we're going to sell that online. The last one, um, and yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what the next steps are for me and Amy. We don't think we're doing. We've done like this is a, that's a fourth show, yeah. so I think we might do. We probably won't be doing the Edinburgh Festival in 2023, mm. um, because of like. We're trying to crack on with some other stuff, and we've done it a lot, and it's very expensive. But we do have a, a very loose idea for doing some sort of Christmas show at the end of the next year. Um, but uh, yeah, a bit of work to do. A bit of it's a bit too early to. There's nothing solid yet, other than oh, Christmas is nice. Should we do something about that? That's <laughs> as far as that's as far as we've got with it. Yeah. And how how do you come up with these um, surreal, um, bizarre, and, and and sort of chaotic ideas? Well, we sort of come up with it together. Really, we um, we sort of it's mainly because we a lot of the job is just talking and trying to make each other laugh, and we sort of we we think about the characters that we've got, and we think about like what because we've been working on the same characters for like five years, mm. so we sort of know them in and out they're basically extensions of herself so we probably have a chat where what would chris be doing in this situation or oh god what if this has happened to amy what would they do together with that so it's like we sort of do that and sometimes we think of the setting and like what situation would we throw them into and all this sort of stuff so yeah uh yeah and do you make your own props? Because when you when you see yourself on online, when you do your stage stuff, do you make your own props? Because you seem to have like elaborate, like out there props. Um, we no, we've never really like we made some small props, but we've never really used loads of props. This last show that we've done is the one that's most prop heavy. But normally, it's more or less just been me and Amy on the stage, and we use. The projector. We've always used a projector for like setting the scene and graphical punchlines and weird little interaction. We put characters on screen and stuff. So I used to do most of that. Um, but over the years, we've sort of found people who are better at doing those sort of things. So in this yeah. most recent show, our good friend Sam O'Leary, who shot, who recorded our last show in Manchester, um, he. Uh, he did the animations and the videos for the new show and in the first couple of shows we had a friend of ours who did uh, called Barnaby Thompson uh, from Soft Mongoose who makes these creature costumes and that's uh, who made Colonel Whippy and um, God what was it Mr Tinnitus from the second show um and most recently the the f- most recent show doesn't have like a monster like that in it yeah. but it does have like we have this big prop bill this boat and basically <laughs> over the years we've just been lucky enough to find like uh, a lot of people who are equally um equal equally like deranged as us who can make, who, but yeah. who are more talented at slightly different things so we tend to like bring them on to help us realize his dreams yeah. Um, which is good fun. 
Now, uh, now here's a hypothetical question. So, if you got to own your own comedy club, what would you call it? Um, Charlie Chuckles Laughter Shack. There we go. <laughs> that that is, that's a very the the, the classic the classic. Yeah. We all, we <laughs> well, originally, originally it was the delightful sausage. It was the name of our little weird club. Um, but yeah, we adopted the title because we liked it so much. Yeah. And and would you, would you call yourselves delightful when you explain uh, yourself to someone? I'd like it feels a bit big headed that, but we do. We, yeah, we we do try as best to uh, make people happy. <laughs> yeah, and and there is, there is a lot of a lot of the. That, that when you see people talking about it, you think it is hilarious. But what I quite like, and that it took it took me a few seconds to realise, is that when when because ne- next up comedy streamed your Edinburgh Fringe show, yes, didn't really use microphones, and and it and did was this a conscious choice to not use a microphone and to use your loud booming voice? Was it was it your choice to not use a microphone because you've got a big loud booming voice, or was that the venue's choice? Um. Oh God. Well, we never use um. We use them now. Yeah, headset mics have always been. We never used to use them because we basically played quite small rooms where we could project quite comfortably into them, but basically. Over the years, like the most recent show, we were in a bigger room than we played before. I think normally we, I think we started off in a forty seater or something like that, uh, and a sixty seater, and we could still sort of project to the crowd. But basically, we in for Edinburgh this year, we've done a hundred seater, um, and it just we we needed more, we needed microphone support, so we started using headset mics. But in general, because we we don't like using mics in the handheld mics because we use as hands and we're sort of normally telling stories and it looks a bit weird. So we sort of made the decision not to use them. But like I say, we've had to rethink that now that we uh, sort of done a, like a slightly bigger room and stuff like that. And now we've recorded it as well. One, it helps people hear it a bit better. Yeah. But um, it it the quality of the sound that we've got needed to be really really good for us to record yeah. it so we can release a really good version. Yeah. And one of the first things I ever watched on Next of Comedy when I first originally got the, the service was your show that is available on Next of Comedy. And what I quite liked about it, it wasn't just the performance itself, because there was this one bloke in the very front you can hear him more than anyone else. And this one bloke is laughing his head off. What and does he they... sound like? <laughs> <laughs> not like I need something. to... I, I need to have a fit. I, I, what I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it's my um, good friend Jack Evans, who's the producer. Of, he's got such a distinctive laugh, and we recorded it in Manchester. So, because what they what the camp, what they've done is because of because they try and go into these small venues, you can see the audience, but you see him because he's like right in the very front. He's like the front row, and every time you try and angle the camera, you still see him in the corner, and you can hear him laughing, and you just hear like a gentle patter of everyone. Yeah, yeah. We should have we should have ejected him really, shouldn't we? Um, yeah. So we uh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Hope hopefully it didn't ruin the experience for no, you. He, he made it. He made it far better because then you you learn. Because I I've never actually been in a comedy club myself because I don't live in an area where there's one nearby. So where, where do you live? It's Lancashire, that's it. Oh, never mind. We're not all perfect. <laughs> and um uh, and, and so and so it's like watching next up makes you feel like you're in the room. So how did Next Up approach you to say, Well, we've got a service that, that uh, we're gonna hopefully be massive with soon. Can we please record your thing? How did they approach you to record your show? Yeah, they basically, yeah. I I think it was via an email after I think We'd had an all right first year and the show had got a bit of traction and the response had been good. So I think it might have been, I can't remember exactly who approached. I think there's a guy called Dan Berg, I think is his name from Next Up, who I think dropped us an email and was super, super nice. And we really, really like Next Up. Um, And I think it might have been Stuart Laws as well, who's another comedian and a friend of ours. 
who I think might have recommended us. I think that might be the chain of events, but both of them are lovely and have been super supportive to us. Yeah. And, and next up, comedy are, are the, the leading service to... It's like, if they didn't do the, the recording and all that, then, they, then they'll still be a good benefit. But because they do the recording as well, it means these people that can't get Netflix specials because they're not big enough have a platform to sell themselves and to make themselves bigger. Because you can yeah. find like the most niche areas of comedy on there and learn that there's this person that's going to be like huge soon. So seeing you on there and then seeing you on the Mash Bar, seeing you on Harry Hill's programme and seeing you here, there and everywhere, it, it's, it's a good stepping stone because people can then say, oh, I like your small segment on this, but I want to see a full show I can go up next up and witness the amazingness and the bizarreness of the delightful sausage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't like, knock them, really. They've, they've been having it on there was brilliant for us in terms of a lot of people seeing it. Um, which at the time is which was uh, yeah, which was really really important when you because when we did that show we were brand new and we were trying to just like do its thing and get people to see it so it was fantastic and they do pick up there's so much stuff that they pick up that's like stuff that you won't see on uh Netflix and stuff yeah. like this or, or Amazon like it's stuff that's sort of somewhere in between that. But if you like comedy, it's like brilliant stuff and you get to see where it is and all stuff. So, yeah, we're big. Yeah, we're big fans of them. Yeah. And and so for for you, apart from you being in the Dice for Sausages, what's the plans for you as as a solo comedian for the next uh, next year, shall we say? Well, next year. So, I mean, uh, Myself and Amy have like quite a few things on the go now post Edinburgh. We're trying to get a few ideas away and we're working on like like little bits and pieces and stuff like this and trying to get treatments for short films and this sort of thing done. So that's a big bit of the year. And another bit is like I'm quite new to stand up, so I'm just sort of starting on that and I'll probably get to work working on a new um on a, on some sort of new stand up. But I also run uh, I run this thing called the Adult Film Club in uh, Manchester and Newcastle now, which is basically a short film night uh, where me and a guy called Sam O'Leary, who did all the uh, animations for me and Amy in the show, we run this night where we like find all these weirdo videos off the internet and play them, and that's going quite well. Um, and 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 that's short films are are amazing and and because I do media at, at college, they always recommend you watching short films. So I have seen a a few weird short films here and there, um, which which one of them was about this t um teleport one where you go back in time and you can and you have to pay this company to go back in time, but every time you go back in time, your mustache gets bigger and bigger. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so how so how do you come up with your ideas for your own material? Where does your your material come from? Well, it's sort of um sort of a mix of stuff really, but basically it's like the last show that I did is very much about my domestic living situation. So I live with my in-laws in an old farmhouse on uh, Hadrian's Wall, um, as we moved up to help them. Um, fell in love with the place and stayed here so my last show was about that so um really it's like stuff like that and plus basically always writing ideas down for stuff so basically when me and amy the times when we're doing separate things and stuff like that i'm always trying to get a couple of things on the go um uh, just to and trying to do a mix of things where you, like where you put something out and you don't you're not too dependent on other people's money and time and stuff like this so yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it it's a variety of things really, but the answer is just sort of keep writing stuff down, keeping a track of modern life and stuff like that and what's going on. So uh, imagine, right, imagine this is Tim, right? And Tim is an up-and-coming comedian. What advice would you give Tim to become uh, a comedian? This is uh, his lovely little Tim, right? He's a, he, he wants to become a comedian. What okay. advice would you give him to become a comedian? Um, do it when you're young, I would say is probably my first thing, <laughs> rather than when you're sort of old and with a child and stuff like this. So, um, yeah, but I, I think the thing is just, 
I think I, I seem to remember when I got started, there's like a lot of procrastination in the prog- in the process and a lot of like hesitating to do gigs and a lot of uh not not making stuff. So I think the answer B is B so sort of work constantly and throw yourself into situations because I think the biggest thing is that you can you anything can be adapted to. You just the only way out is through. Do you know what I mean? You just yeah. need to you need to do it. And then like basically if you're worried about what if I die? Well you will die. So just crack on and just <laughs> embrace it because eventually it won't you won't really care as much. Yeah. And so what uh T V shows, going back way back to me noon, what type of T V shows inspired you to get into the comedy industry? Oh, it's probably stuff like uh shooting I think when I was in it, it was shooting stars. League of Gentlemen, um, and probably shows like Look Around You, um, a bit later, maybe Garth Marenghi and stuff like this. So, like, all the cool, weirdo stuff that I don't really feel you see around loads these days, uh, which is the gap that hopefully me and Amy would love to fill. Yeah, and, and I can sort of see, I can sort of see the, the, the resemblance now between your stuff and then the weird stuff you see on League of Gentlemen because it is, it is that sort of surreal and, and, and then Garth Rooney's dark place is quite bizarre. Um, but you, you, once you've seen it, you, you can't for, ever forget it. It, it yeah. will stick with you. Uh, and so coming towards the end of this interview now, uh, and w- so now that uh, we've learned a lot about you, what uh, new comedians can you recommend to other people, the lovely dear viewers? Oh, my Lord. I don't know about new ones. Let me think who have. Well, um, I've sort of moved to the northeast, so I'm getting used to seeing people up here. So I'd say she's not particularly, She, I don't think she's brand new, but like I've really enjoyed watching Sammy Dobson. Um, there's a sketch double act that I really like um, called Chrisard here in London, and they're really cool. Um, let me think of one more third person. Who else is? Who else do I really enjoy? Um, oh, um, like in because I, I used to gig a lot in Manchester, so now it feels like there's really some really cool comics in Manchester. In particular, there's like uh, Erica Ayla. And Dan Tiernan, who uh, are two sort of emerging comics from the Manchester scene, and they are both brilliant from what I've seen. So I would definitely check all of them out. And there's probably a million trillion people uh, that I've absolutely forgot about. Uh, and so um, another coming now, properly now towards the end. Uh, if would you ever uh, and and and. I'd, no one, no one knows who's going to be in series fifteen. But would you ever want to appear on Taskmaster either alone or with Amy? Oh, uh, one hundred percent. I, I don't think. I think who turned that down? It's an amazing show. Um, yeah, I think it's great and it's really, it's really funny. Um, so yeah, would love to be on it. However, how whichever way they'd have me, maybe even just serving the teas. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, cause I, I think you would work really well because you and you and Alex, because when Alex used to stand up himself, he he had a similar sort of uh feel to your stuff because it was more oh. of it was more of a weird because he used to do a lot with echoes where he would like lip sync to his own material and really freak people out. Oh, that's very cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's exactly my cup of tea. It, it was a it was a proper mind melder, um. And if you were going to create your own panel show as the delightful sausages, what would what would the sh- concept of the show be? Um, I think it'd probably be somewhat weird about like uh falling out about family feuds or weird things about uh Binde or something like that. Super local and bitter and weird. We love stuff about domestic stuff. So, so it'd be called Binder, and it'd be, it'd be called Binder. Yes, yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Two, two teams, two teams are trapped in a bin, are in sat in bins. They tend to have different color bins for different days, and and all yeah, the questions, all the questions are related to which bin is supposed to be out on which day. It will just burn everything again. Yeah, and then and then and then you just and then the whole epi- the whole series will end with all the bins set on fire. 
Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I I can see that. I can see that on uh, on Dave because Dave Dave commissioned anything because he they used to do a thing where they used to commission something and they would just let it run 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 on. So there was what there was one with Marcus Brigstock where he was trying out tech. And one of the episodes, he ended up try he ended up cleaning a window with a with a baby doll, which was a a very weird thing to do. Uh, so now that we've uh now that we're at the at the finishing line, the the green then no no it's the black and white finishing line. You can sort of see the flags, and and it's coming to it's coming to a pit stop. Uh, this is your time now to promote anything about yourself or about your uh, double act, what would you like to promote or, or where they can see you? If you haven't got anything to promote, where can they see you? The best thing, uh, well, if, you can, if you want to see us, I'd say go or me and Amy go online and watch us on uh, on YouTube, on Great Britain, Wide Open and Ready. That's a little web series that we've just done that's really cool. Uh, and also, we've just recorded uh, the next thing that we've got upcoming uh, that we can talk about is uh, we've recorded our special, which is Notebook C, that was nominated at the Edinburgh Fringe for the main show award. Um, and we're releasing that, um, not sure exactly how yet, but we will be releasing that ourselves um, in probably January. So keep an eye out for that. And other than that, I don't know. Yeah, I've not got alt specific other than a few gigs in for myself. So um, yeah, just uh, sort of. Well, my first job is to get myself a website set up. So um, hopefully check out the website in hopefully the end of the year. And you can also see some of our other shows, one on Next of Comedy and one on GoFastestDrive.com. Um, Thank you, Tom. At least someone's doing the job, eh? Yeah, well, I I, well, I can highly recommend both of the shows uh, and hopefully what one day uh, Go Fast to Strike will spend a little bit more money and uh, get their special one to DVD and uh, uh, then all the physical media fans can have it in their uh, stand-up collection. I would, would love that, yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, so, thank you for coming on to, to this uh, opening episode to the podcast Joking Apart. Now, for the future of the podcast, Joking Apart is a Tom's Comedy Club might get renamed to depend on if I can find a name that actually sounds like a comedy club rather than Tom's Comedy Club because that's a cliche and uh, and then a knockout of the park. So, joking apart, we'll be back soon. So, new episodes coming soon. And if you're watching this on YouTube, well done. If you're watching this on Spotify, well done. If you're listening to this on Apple, I'm really sorry. Uh, I feel I feel so sorry for you. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you enjoyed the interview if you want to see more interviews by Mumwa check out uh, Tom Mason The Weird Side and Taskmaster World um, they're the main places and if you want to see random clips uh, check out Two Gen Productions and um, the, the short world of Tom Mason where I've got shorts of like uh, Josh Thompson Justine Smith and Steve McNeil but Thank you guys for watching and remember, no, I've forgotten. Oh, oh.